Scientists are claiming that they have discovered the mathematical formula of happiness. Quote, researchers at the University College London say happiness, or at least a discrete moment of it, can be represented in an equation. So they publish their work in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and the gist of the formula, which, by the way, to a layman's eye, like my own eye, it, it looks just like every other fucking formula I've ever seen in my life, but basically to lay it out rhetorically, it, it's essentially, quote, happiness spikes when we win and our expectations are low, but that happiness gradually fades over time. So that's, in essence, what the equation to happiness is. So here's what they did. Quote, with MRI machines, the researchers peered into the minds of 26 subjects who were playing a gambling game. Throughout the game, the computer asked participants to rate how happy they were on a 1 to 10 scale. The re researchers then not so simply combined brain activity data with the reported levels of happiness and the participants' history of success in the game and crafted the equation. What they found was that it wasn't the overall amount of money won in the game that gave the participants the greatest happiness. The formula incorporates a forgetting factor, which predicts, which predicts that the happiness obtained from a previous win degrades over time. Ten more trials after a win, the original win, essentially has no influence on current happiness. So, again, to repeat it, they say happiness spikes when we win and our expectations are low. But then it will, uh, you know, gradually fade away over time. And again, I can't stress this point enough. What they're saying is, we know the equation for a fleeting moment of happiness. That essential, like, I don't know whether it's a serotonin spike in the mind or a dopamine spike or whatever. Just that essential moment of, oh, that's awesome, I'm fucking happy for this brief second. Okay, so... Uh, probably their biggest piece of evidence is this. They say that the formula predicted the happiness of 18,000 people to play the game. So it appears to be relatively concrete. They're saying, look, this is what it is. If you don't like it, sucks for you. This is the reality. Now, at risk of being way too corny and cheesy and walking right into that trap, as I'm about to do, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the long-term way to be happy. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front, man, this is all made up. <laughs> this isn't based on science. This isn't based on evidence or research or anything. This is me, a douchebag with a microphone in front of him, telling you what my opinion is on uh, long-term happiness. And it's fairly simple. The first two steps are kind of... Number one is, don't be a dick. That's number one. There are actual studies that have said, well, look, it actually makes people feel great when they give away gifts. They say it actually, it, when you receive a gift, you don't even get as happy as when you give. When you give, for whatever reason, it makes people feel better. So, point number one in life is just don't be an asshole and that'll make you feel a little more happy. Point number two, have orgasms. <laughs> I know it sounds silly and I know it sounds very primitive and visceral, and it is... But look, what are we but advanced apes? It's what we are. We all shit. We all have a shitload of hair follicles on our body. We evolved, right? We evolved from apes. We still are animals. What do animals like to do? They like to fuck. Maybe a tiny percentage of the population is excluded from this particular prong on the happiness scale because they're asexual, but okay, most people... It applies. You probably want to be busting nuts all over the place in order to feel happy. You can go overboard, and maybe there are a few people that have some sort of legitimate sex addiction where it gets in the way of their work and everything ever, right? And they're just fucking 900 times a day. Probably want to scale that back a little bit, but yeah, you should probably have one orgasm a day. I'm totally making up the number, pulling it out of my ass, but probably makes sense, right? And then the final thing, and look, this is the most important thing because it ditches the, you know, the silly one of just be a good person and fucking have sex, right? Uh, find a passion. That is, I think, what, at least, again, speaking just from my own point of view here, totally biased and not based on research or anything, but I know anecdotally, whenever in my life I've had a passion, and I've gone through many of them, when you're a kid you have different sports-related ones, and then as you get older they get a little, little bit more realistic, and uh, obviously the show that I'm doing right now 
love it to death. I don't know what I would do without it. It's fucking fantastic. I can't get enough of it, and I'm addicted to it, right? And that's the thing is, a lot of people would argue with me because they'd say, no, that could be unhealthy. You want balance. That's what people say. Well, you need balance in life. I say, fuck that. You don't need balance. You don't need balance. Uh, take it from me. I know it's a radical thing to say, but I believe it to my core that if you actually give a shit about something and you put your everything into it, that can be fucking rewarding. And look, there are so many examples of this. I know there, it's a silly thing to bring up, but look at professional sports athletes who have done amazing things. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Tiger Woods. These are people you can see in their eyes when they're in the zone that they're on another plane. They kind of transcend, not really, but they kind of transcend their humanity for a brief second. And it's like they're so focused on something that it really brings you to an emotional state that's super tranquil. And look, another thing that's probably controversial is I view my life philosophy as the opposite of Buddhism. For Buddhists, they say, well, you don't want to connect yourself to anything in this world. You want to be above the fray and you want to fill yourself with nothingness and just understand that this life is a ride real quick. I say the opposite. I want you to get incredibly passionate about something. I want you to not only have a passion, possibly even have an obsession. When people say, oh my God, obsessions are bad. No, so, sure, some are unhealthy, and if you do it too much, it can fucking ruin your life. Like, drug addicts, especially certain drugs, it could really fuck you up. There are plenty of things in life where that's ah, a problem. Gambling, you might want to get away from that. You're losing all your money, and you're going to lose your fucking mortgage. But look, as long as you're not hurting other people, and as long as you can keep it under control, as you are obsessed, by all means, be obsessed all day, all day long. It's a reason to wake up in the morning and go, I love this thing, I need to do this thing a lot, I love it so much. So, and look, I'm one of those guys that says, there are most things, if you're addicted to most things, it's not bad, right? Addiction is not necessarily a bad thing. Sure, it's bad in some cases with certain things, and it can ruin your life in some respects, but in a lot of areas, fuck, if you're addicted to chess, that's awesome! <laughs> Get great at chess, win a championship, feel awesome about yourself, dedicate your life to it, go in the history books of the best chess player ever, right? So, uh, I know it's silly, and I know I'm all over the place here, but... Uh, in terms of, we've given you the mathematical formula and the equation for an instant moment of happiness, and in terms of just my opinion based on absolutely nothing, those are the three prongs to happiness right there. Okay? Don't be a dick. Bust nuts. <laughs> and have a passion. And look, I'll go even a step further. It, it, at least have one passion, find one passion, but I say you can go as high, max out at four. Then every moment of every, of your life, if you're focused doing any of your passions, it'll be fantastic. And I get it, man. A lot of people have a job they fucking hate, and they don't have any time for their passion. Which is, believe me, brother, that's why I'm out here arguing for a four-day work week, and I want you to have a shitload of vacation time. Because I know most people hate their fucking job, and they can't do their passion all the time. I want you to be able to do your passion a lot. So that's why I'm out here fighting for it. And hopefully you can find a job or do something that involves your passion, or one of your passions. Because I truly believe that that's something that actually fulfills you and puts genuine meaning in your life.